Hi, I'm Thais, I'm the technical evangelist at Varnish Software. It is Tuesday, you know what that means, another episode of Two Minute Tech Tuesdays. Your weekly appointment for Varnish Technology presented to you in two minutes or less. And this week's episode is about VCL, the Varnish configuration language. And I must admit, it's a, it's a big one. It's, it's the number one feature of Varnish. It's the unique selling point, the reason why people like it so much, and the reason why millions of websites use it. Now, of course, two minutes cannot do it justice. That's impossible. But I only have two minutes, so I'll briefly, just briefly highlight and introduce VCL to you. So I'll put two minutes on the timer. Ready, set, go. VCL is short for Varnish Configuration Language and is in fact a DSL, a domain-specific language, meaning it can only be used within the context of Varnish. It is a curly braces style language, which makes it similar to languages like C and Java. But unlike these languages, VCL is not a top-down programming language. Instead, it extends standard behavior to a predefined set of subroutines. And these subroutines reflect the flow of the built-in finite state machine of Varnish. The code itself gets translated into C code and eventually compiled to machine code when Varnish starts. The purpose of VCL is request handling, request routing, response manipulation, backend selection, controlling the cache, decision making on the edge, and many other features. And the benefits of VCL are that it's extremely powerful and fast. And that's thanks to its architecture, its very narrow scope, and the fact that the code gets translated into C code. But it's also tremendously flexible when you compare it to a simple configuration file, when instead you have a full-blown programming language, the flexibility is second to none. And that is thanks to the rich syntax of VCL and the ecosystem of modules, VMODs as we call them, that allow you to do things that aren't possible in standard VCL. Allow me to throw in a code example, a simple code example. It all starts with the VCL version label. In this case, it's version 4.1, but in no way reflects the version of Varnish itself. This is the latest version 4.0 and is perfectly compatible with the latest version of Varnish. We also need to define a backend. This is the server that Varnish connects to when content is not stored in cache and needs to be fetched. We define host and port properties and there's many other optional parameters to tune. In this very specific example, we'll hook into the VCL receive subroutine, which is called in the finite state machine when requests are received from a client. So in this case, we're evaluating the request URL and matching it to a specific regular expression pattern. If the regular expression pattern matches admin or a subordinate resource of admin, we decide not to cache. Unfortunately, the two minutes are over. And as I warned you, two minutes doesn't do VCL justice. But worry not, in many technical resources, nearly all of them, there is in some way, shape or form VCL, be it in our tech blogs, our webinars, our presentations, our books, our tutorials, our documentation. And even in next week's video, there will be VCL. So check us out next week for more tech about Varnish presented to you in two minutes or less.